Hi there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled Bloody Awful Punctuation. My name is Tim Warner, and I'm a PowerShell community member as well as a PowerShell.org video contributor. What we're doing in this short video series is presenting simple, easy to digest explanations of fundamental PowerShell concepts, in particular, what many of us call gotchas, stuff that might not just line up properly in your mind and you're wondering, am I crazy or is this really something weird in the PowerShell language? Check out the bit.ly link at the bottom of this slide. This link will take you to the free ebook, The Big Book of PowerShell Gotchas. That's specifically where these videos are coming from. And even more to the point, today we're concerned with gotcha number 13, bloody awful punctuation. Let's get into the code. Here we are in the Windows PowerShell ISE. The script file we're using for today's tech session is called punctuation.ps1. And as usual, I'll give you the download link at the end of this lesson. I have my contact information up on the top of the script if you're interested, and then as usual I have a series of commands that set the environment. Specifically, I want to select line 15 and run that so you can compare the PowerShell engine version that you have on your system versus what I have on mine to explain any differences that you may see. I'm running Windows PowerShell v5 release to manufacturing. I also suggest that you run update help to make sure that you have the full help documentation on your system, and you may want to temporarily relax script execution policy. Okay, the issue here is the inconsistent punctuation that you see in the PowerShell language. I once saw Jeffrey Snover give a speech in which he discusses the history of the PowerShell language. Also check out PowerShell engineer Bruce Payat's book, Windows in Action, because he goes into quite a bit of good history there as well. And what you have are the engineers picking and choosing the best parts of different shell, operating system shell languages, scripting languages, and programming languages. And then in PowerShell, you get a little of everything. That's good, and it has the advantage of that PowerShell should be instantly familiar to most people, even those with limited programming or scripting experience. On the other hand, the sometimes apparent inconsistencies in the punctuation can lead to some confusion, hence our topic for today. So to get us started, I've created a region called a punctuation roundup in which I create a simple function here, a basic, not an advanced function, called get hello. Now the first thing I want you to see are the curly braces. You'll notice that I put curly braces on a separate line. That, that is, sometimes you'll see PowerShell scripters do this. Wherever they're opening a code block, they'll put the open symbol on the same line as its related keyword, but just as much, specifically if you look in the Microsoft documentation, I think you'll see more use of this. I like this approach because my code blocks wind up A, lining up nicely, and B, it makes it easier for me to find that I've properly closed every block. After all, your PowerShell scripts can quickly grow complex. So that's one thing. We'll discuss specifically what's going on with the curly braces in just a minute, but notice that in that function body, I'm going to define an optional parameter. Parameters are an example of a construct that uses the parentheses, curly brace, parentheses. Within this parameter block, notice that I've created a variable called first name. Variables are always prepended with a dollar sign, as we know. Square brackets, which are what these guys are called, can be used for a number of different things. In this example, we're defining a data type for the first name variable. We're using the string data type. Even more to the point, when you use a string data type that you want to allow array values, where we pass in not just a single string, but perhaps a sequence of strings, you signify that with open and close square brackets as well. Now we get down into the body of this very simple function. Let's see if there's anything interesting punctuation-wise here. There actually is. What you're seeing right here is a call to write host where we're going to pass in a first name to the function when we run it. And the function's going to come back and say, hello, comma, first name, exclamation mark. Now I'm here to tell you, if I use single quotes here instead of double quotes, I'm going to get different results. That's a common question that many newcomers to PowerShell has. When 
do I use single quotes versus double quotes? And the general best practice is to use single quotes wherever possible, unless there's two cases, really. One where you want to do a quote inside a quote. In that case, you'll have to use them both. But the most common reason to use double quotes is for something called string interpolation. In other words, we want this output not to say literally, hello, comma, dollar, first name. We want it to substitute in the parameter. Let me show you what I'm talking about by selecting the these code lines, putting the function into our run space. And now I'll call it with get hello. I'm using tab completion here and I'll specify Tim. That comes back with hello comma Tim exclamation mark. And because this string value, I used the punctuation of open and close square brackets. That means I can come back. I used the up arrow to do that, by the way, and pass in more than one value, Tim comma Warner. And that correctly gives us the results back. Now watch what happens if I change those double quotes that surround that variable call. To single quotes. Well, you notice that the color coding that the ISE gives changed. It made it all black. So I hope you're thinking to yourself, well, what does all black mean? You're about to find out. Let's carefully reselect the function lines again, run the code. I'll CLS to clear the screen, and let's call get hello again, and this time pass in the same input that we had before. Look what it does. Hello, dollar first name. To be tricky, I can quote my input, if I can type correctly, and it still does it. So the bottom line is, if you want to do string interpolation and expand variable values inside of a quoted string, make sure to use double quotes there instead of single, okay? In the next section here that I call here strings, this is an interesting concept. You may have string data, maybe you're defining a variable. And that string data extends beyond one line. It's just a lot of data, and you actually want to put it in your script in a way that's easier on the eyes. The way to do that is to create what's called a here string. And again, it's kind of wacky, the punctuation. I'm creating a variable called documentation. And then what you do is at double quote, and then to close the here string, it's double quote at. And anything in between is considered a single string. Even if you have line spacing, and non-standard line breaks that normally would make a PowerShell parser bark at you, here it's going to work just fine. And I've actually created this here string to be useful to us, come to think of it. As a matter of fact, the fact that we have this indentation brings up a point I forgot to mention up above. The general practice is to indent your code for spaces. I'd like to encourage you not to use the tab key because you never know which editor you're using, how that's going to be interpreted. When you press tab, that's actually an honest to goodness character code. By contrast, if you use the space bar four times, then those are just putting spaces in. And many scripting languages besides PowerShell can be friendly to spaces. All right, so having said that, let's come back down to this here string. And this is just a roundup of the points that we've discussed thus far. Parentheses enclose expressions for each, if, what we saw up above with parameters, square brackets surround attributes, data types, and arrays, curly braces, or just braces, as they're called, contain executable code like try or begin blocks. In the documentation and the PowerShell help, you'll see angle brackets that are enclosing data types. Semicolons ignored unless you use it as a statement separator. In contrast to the pipeline, you can use the semicolon to do something like this, clear, post, semicolon, get, uptime. That's a function that I have in my profile script, so that'll work on my system, but probably won't yours. But in this case, the semicolon separates two completely different commands. This is absolutely different from the pipe, because the pipe assumes we're going to take the output of the first command and send it to the second, and that's absolutely not what we want. The backtick is used to terminate lines, but watch trailing space. You can also break multiple lines to make your code easier to read by breaking at the pipe. Have some examples of that down here on lines 48 and 49. Get service on the local host, pipe, and then we can add our second calls. That's really useful when you want to take a PowerShell one-liner that's really honking long and make it easier to read, especially when I'm training. I don't want to have to do horizontal scrolling all day long. Now, because spaces are ignored in a pipeline, I can put extra spaces after that pipe, and this should still work just fine. Yes, it did. But when we're using the backtick character, you have to be really careful and have no spaces after the backtick. The backtick, by the way, is on your keyboard above the tab key. You don't need the shift. It's just the key above tab. It's not a single quote character. It's called the backtick. 
Now, as long as you don't have any spaces after the back tick, nor any additional spaces on the subsequent line, that should work. But my friend and colleague Don Jones is a big enemy, I think, of suggesting the back tick because it's just so persnickety. Unless you're using a tool like Tobias Veltner's ISE steroids that actually will show non-printing characters in your script, you may not know that you have white space after your pipe, and then when you run the command, it appears to run properly, but then it bombs out at the end. So in this case, the get child item on my D drive ran, but then PowerShell got confused because it saw a back tick, a space, and then filter, so it kind of freaked out. The last thing I'd like to show you is in the documentation, we can do a call here to get help looking at the get event log command but looking at it in the browser you're going to see some strange punctuation in the parameter set syntax area specifically I, I like this get event log command it's a good example of this we have two ways to use get event log we can go into the logs themselves that's the first parameter set or we can just look at metadata concerning the logs themselves in other words how large the logs are what their retention policy is etc when we're dipping into a log, notice here that this first bit log name string doesn't have square brackets around the whole thing. It's just log name and square brackets, and then the data type string is not included in square brackets. I don't find this very logical, but the truth of the matter is if we come down and look at that parameter, here it is right here, you see that it is required at position one. So required parameters show up in the syntax list with the data type not part of an overall square bracket. You'll notice that instance IDs is an optional parameter because the entire thing, both the parameter and the data type, are enclosed in square brackets. Is that intuitively obvious? It wasn't to me, so don't feel bad if it isn't to you. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this tech session. You can download the script file from my website, timwarnertech.com forward slash punctuation dot zip. Check out this and the related videos at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash PowerShell org. The community site is PowerShell.org. And if you need to reach me, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, my email address is timothy-warner at pluralsite.com. Also, you can find me at LinkedIn, and my Twitter handle is techtrainertim. Take good care.